Hey guys, and welcome back to Better C Sharp. Uh, last time we talked about configuration, and this time we're going to talk about command line arguments. Uh, so between the last video and this one, I did a little more research on the command line argument stuff, and I found that there is actually a provider uh, for the Microsoft extensions configuration that points at command line arguments. So I'm going to show that one first. Uh, but then after that, we're going to take a look at another one. Uh, called command line parser and uh, that one I think is still my favorite one and we'll we'll show why here in just a little bit so <clears throat> let's go ahead and talk about why we want command line arguments um, so things in config files so let's take a look at our config file here we have like our file writer destination max random int random int count and constant value uh, three of these things probably change more often than uh, the other. <laughs> and so those three being constant value, random int count, and random max random int. Uh, these probably we might want to like change from different, like from run to run without, and we don't want to have to go in and change the file every time we want to change these. Uh, we might want to provide like a default or something like that. Uh, but so generally what you'll find is there's going to be configuration settings that stay the same most of the time, such as like email addresses or connection strings or uh, file destinations, stuff like that. Um, those usually tend to stay the same. Um, a lot of times you'll have different environments like dev, test, and prod, and those will differ between those environments, but within each one of those environments, they'll generally stay the same. So <clears throat> like over time. So, but what we want is to be able to change the ones that need changing. Um, a common one that I run into is like thread count, like how how many threads do you want to run this thing as? Um, you know, you might want to change like, you know, if you're doing some like database stuff or you're pulling stuff out of a database and putting it somewhere else, you might want to have like a limit of how many you want to do and do them in batches and stuff like that. So that kind of stuff, you might want to change just using command line arguments because that's so much easier than having to go in and like edit a config file every time you want to run something. Um, so let's talk about uh, how to get this set up with the Microsoft uh, configuration provider for command line arguments. So uh, just like we have one here for JSON, um, and we talked about in the last video, I think there's one for Azure and there's like one for uh, environment variables and stuff like that. Um, there's also one for command line, I believe is what it is. <clears throat> you can go ahead and build that and get that, uh, get that DLL in. Um, and then we will reload our OmniSharp server. So it picks that up. Uh, and so what we can do now is just add a uh, command line, I think is what it is. And you need, um, args. And so we have to pass that in. So we'll pass in args. Oops. Okay. So now, um, when we run this, we're gonna what the way this works is we can override what's in the file based on command line arguments. So if we run right now, we're gonna get twenty values with a maximum of five thousand. They're all gonna get multiplied by five. <clears throat> So you can see we got 20 values each time they got multiplied by five and written out. So uh, what we can do now is we can do that same thing, but pass in, um, let's say random int count of two. So now we're only going to get two uh, coming in and that's exactly what we see. And we can do that for all of these. So, uh, you know, max random int could be, you know, five, and then the constant value could be, you know, 500 or, you know, 600, make it a little different. Okay, so three times 600 is 1800. We got the same one twice. Not surprising when you can only have five values. Um, so that is how the Microsoft configuration one works. Um, me, I wonder if it builds any kind of help. .NET, uh, I don't think it does. No. So 
There's another way we can do this, and that is with a a different library called um, it is called command line parser, and the current version is 2.8.0. So we're gonna come over here. Actually, let's just go ahead and get check out everything, and then we'll add it back in there. Command line parser version 2.8.0. We'll build that so we can get the library uh, in here so we can pick it up with OmniSharp. Um, and so what this one does is it allows you to specify an options uh, an options class. So let's go ahead and do that. Public class options. And we will put uh, we're gonna grab these three values because they're the most likely ones that will change, and we'll just put them in there. Um, and we'll take them out of the interface here, and we'll take them out of the interface here. Or out of the config file here. So, the way this works is uh, command line parser has, um, has, a, has an attribute here that will let you fill out uh, certain things. So, let's say uh, m for max, and then max... And then uh, let's say required is false. Uh, default will be 5,000, and the help text will be um, the maximum integer to generate. So let's go ahead and put a couple more of these. Uh, we'll do this one will be uh, C for count. And then uh, we'll say this is default of 20 and um, the number of integers to generate. And then on the last one, we'll do something different. So we'll uh, not give it a single character. We'll call it a uh, multiplier, maybe. Um, it is required because we're not going to give it a default. Um, and then we'll say the number to multiply random integers by. So what this gives us is now uh, what we can do, this isn't going to build because we took some stuff out of our interface. So let's go ahead and fix that. I'm gonna build. <clears throat> okay, so we need to fix constant multiplier and random int provider, right? So uh, what we can do then is we will selection.add singleton um, options for now. And then in our constant multiplier, we will instead take in options and we'll rename it. And we'll do the same thing in, ran oops, in uh, random int provider. Excellent. So uh, let's see if that builds. <clears throat> All right, so what this gives us now is in our main, we can say um, parser, which is a command line uh, class, static class. We'll get the default one, or it's not a static class, sorry. Default is, I guess, a singleton there. Um, and then parse arguments, and we'll say options. <clears throat> and then we'll say with parsed of type options, and we'll say options. And then we'll put all of this in here. Uh, parse arguments. Oh, we have to pass in. Sorry, arguments. Okay. And then we'll pass that into here. And we'll just make that happen. Okay. And now we will say uh, options. So now uh, what happens is uh, .NET build. See if that builds. What this will do for us is we can now call .NET build and we'll say help. And we'll get this help text that automatically gets generated for us. Um, oops, sorry, wrong uh, command there. .NET run. We'll get help text that automatically gets generated for us based on those attributes that we just saw. So you see you can use either dash M or max to get 
uh, the maximum integer and whatnot. And if we try and run it, so you see required is there on multiplier. Uh, if we try and run it without that, it will tell us. It'll say, hey, you've got an error. So errors required option multiplier is missing. So it'll tell us the rest of this stuff. Um, and then, you know, architecture is the name of the assembly uh, of the project and uh, version is generated in there as well. Um, so, so this generates some super cool stuff. And so let's try and run it with uh, .NET run, let say multiplier uh, 500. There we go. So we got our 20 different integers. We got a multiplier 500. We can try, uh, let's say a, a max of 20 and a, a count of five. So there you go. And you can, there's options that have multiple, uh, have multiple names. They can have like a long name and a short name. So I really like command line parser. Um, I think it's super cool. One thing I do like to do though is like everything else, I like to make it an interface. Um, and the reason I do that is so that uh, we can make these read only. And so when we go in here and set this, I options to change it to that. And we'll have to go in and also change it uh, in here and in here. And so now none of these classes can overwrite the options that we that we got from the command line. So I really enjoy command line parser. I think personally, I think it's better than uh, the Microsoft extensions. The extensions uh, configuration provider from Microsoft is like super quick to implement though. Like you don't have to change anything and it lets you overwrite uh, your settings files. So that's cool that all that stuff is built in. Um, I wish it had more options for uh, doing kind of help text and stuff. So you can do that on your own, um, but also you could still, you could combine these two, uh, the command line parser and the, uh, configuration providers to get the best of both worlds if you wanted. Uh, but yeah, so that is uh, command line arguments. Um, I I use this all the time because a lot of like every program I write pretty much I want to be able to control how how it works. Um, you know, and not all you know you can even have stuff in here that's like you know bool write to file. You know. And, uh, oops. Uh -huh. What was that called? Oh, uh, we were in program. <clears throat> okay. uh, all right. Uh, and so you could even have like a bull in here to say, hey, um, do we want to even write to a file? And so you say option, uh, you know, write to file, help text. We'll say default is true, and uh, help text is whether or not to write to file. So you have something like that, and then you know down here, uh, you could be like, if uh, not options dot write to file then uh, we could do one implementation otherwise we could do our uh, in fact let's reverse this um, so if you do write want to write to file you can give that provider and then if not you could be like you know collection dot add singleton we have uh, I writer int and null writer, or something like that. And we could, you know, generate uh, generate class null writer, go to it. <clears throat> I writer of int. And there you go. So now, um, now what we could do is if we didn't want to write to the file, now we can have a null writer and that 
it just makes it super easy to keep extending. Uh, if you if you have like all your setup here and you use the command line arguments and you use configuration, it's just uh, very easy to to change things about your program. So, and all of this stems from the solid principles, just following that class architecture, you know, inverting your dependencies and uh, making sure things have a single responsibility, that they're open to extension and closed for modification, all of those things. Um, and then, you know, right here, the, you know, having the list off substitution principle where, you know, you can substitute any of these things for any of the others and they'll still work. Um, so yeah, this is solid principles at work. Uh, and this is what it looks like to have things configurable from the command line arguments and from uh, configuration. So I hope that helps. I uh, hope this gives you guys a good way to write your programs to make them extensible. And uh, I hope you guys have enjoyed this. So we'll be back next time. Thanks.